Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, before I kick off, I should explain, this isn't actually a product review video as such because there's hundreds of them out there on YouTube at the minute. This is more a workflow video. So I haven't actually tried and tested it yet. What am I talking about, of course? I should have told you that at the top of the video. It's the new DJI Osmo Action 3. Very excited actually to see what this is like. Uh, and on top of that, I'm gonna be using the new, well, not so new, DJI wireless microphone system. This has been out for a few months now. I actually use this at work when I'm filming and it's incredible. So I'm very excited the fact that it does talk to the Action 3. So I'm just wondering, have I eventually found the holy grail of motor vlogging setups? First things first though, before I head out on the road, I'll show you how I'm gonna attach this to the helmet. Now, one of the things, first of all, which excites me greatly about this is the snap mount. What that means for me is that I can literally hot swap the camera within seconds straight onto uh, a selfie stick. By the way, this isn't the um, DJI uh, selfie stick. I'll explain this one first of all. This is the GoPro selfie stick. So you can use it as a selfie stick, but when I'm out by myself as well, I can also use it as a tripod. Um, which is really, really handy. Um, it, it, it's an amazing system, that. So I'm sticking with the GoPro stick for this. I bought the Adventure Combo with the Action 3, which comes with the selfie stick, but it's not a tripod. So I've sort of ditched that. Um, and like I say, I'm going to carry on using this uh, GoPro stick. Uh, but that is the DJI Osmo Action 3 snap mount. So I've got a snap mount on there, and it's magnetic. He says... Yes, it is. It's, <laughs> it seems like the, uh, the magnet was reversed there or something. We're sort of pushing it away, so maybe it only goes on one way. So that's the snap mount, and then you press the little levers at the side. If I can get my sausage fingers in there to do so. See how I pull a funny face when I'm doing things like that. So it comes straight up and then snaps onto the uh, helmet, just like that. Unbelievable. Now, here's the exciting bit, because I'm now going to plug in the wireless go mic. I'll tell you what, come over here and I'll show you in close up. Look at how neat and compact that is. So that's the receiver in the middle. It all springs to life, by the way, when you open the box. Very much like the, the battery pack, which comes with the Adventure Combo. The reason I bought this Adventure Combo was mainly because of the battery pack. I should point out at this stage, it charges the batteries to 80% uh, within 18 minutes and only 50 minutes to charge three batteries full of charge and they last for like 160 minutes what's that a hundred and what well, two and a half hours or something like that so incredible technology these days so what that comes with i don't know if you can get a nice tight shot in there my daughter has been the camera operator today should be putting me out of a job she's doing a great job so in there we have the little accessories which literally click onto the back of the receiver um, and in this case, I'm going to use the little USB accessory and that plugs straight into the USB socket on the side of the Osmo Action 3. Like that. And that clicks solidly into place. And then we click it just into the USB. You will have to take the little door off. Uh, I'm forever losing the doors, but that clicks in nice and solid there. So I don't see a problem when I'm riding along at 300 kilometers per hour on my motorbike, it should be okay. And back to this, we'll take out just one of the um, transmitters, I call this one, transmitter one. Now, again, what I love about this, you see the little magnet there? Well, what you can do with this, first of all, um, I shall uh, pop the windshield on before I forget that the windshield comes with the microphone. So that's the windshield on. Now, what I am going to show you is how to, well, how I'm going to mount it on the inside of the helmet. But when you're not doing that as well, I'll show you this. You still got me in shot there, Ava. So I showed you how to disconnect the camera very quickly from the helmet onto the selfie stick. When I want to walk along and do my pieces to camera, I have the radio mic literally within seconds. All of that can happen. It's the quickest system I've ever used. I still don't know if it works yet, so I will shut up very soon and I'll go out on the motorbike and test all of this new tech. If you don't want to see it in shot because it is a bit ugly, that's a little magnet there, which comes on the handle, very strong magnet. So pop that on the inside of your t-shirt. 
and magnetize it like that. Just, it makes the whole thing a bit neater if you are doing a piece to camera. I'm not using the audio from this at the minute, obviously, because I'm filming all of this on my daughter's filming all of this on my iPhone because I'm connecting all of this to the Osmo Action 3. So pop over here, Ava, have one last little look at this uh, and we'll hit the highway, so to speak. Um, so I'll pop that back on there. Right, I wonder, can you see inside the helmet here? What I'm gonna do is the, oh, this is just a normal chin strap, by the way. This is the Insta360, sorry, chin strap. Um, but you can buy loads of them now uh, on Amazon. You can pick them up for a tenner or something like that. I particularly love this one because the rubber on the underneath is very soft and moldable uh, and just sits really solid. So like I say, that's the Insta360 one. So I'm going to pop the microphone there with its windshield on, don't forget, and clip it on the inside of the strap. I don't know how well you can see that. Bit of a tight fit, but then I don't want it falling off, uh, certainly when I'm riding along. So there you go. We'll see how we get on with that. I'm sure there might be a little bit of a neater solution eventually, but for today's testing purposes, I'll stick with that. Okay, so let's kick off. First of all, I should uh, explain I have the ultra wide lens setting selected. Um, and that that's the reason I've come out on the Aprilia RS 660 because I always had a problem with any uh, action camera trying to get a decent shot of the cockpit. Now I can see on the back of the camera um, that it's a, a nice wide vista. I suspect it's going to be too wide when I get back in the edit and start really scrutinising it. Like I say, this is the ultra wide. Um, there's also a wide mode and also a standard mode within those modes as well you can have horizon leveling and uh, rock steady as well i think uh, there's a feature if you go down to 2.7k um, the horizon will lock even though you turn the camera around in a full 360 degree it'll keep the horizon uh, locked the other thing i should point out here is uh, i'm in normal color um, now, there are two colour modes, uh, DJI's log mode, they call DJ, uh, what do they call it, D-Cine-like, uh, and it's the same for all of the drones as well. Um, this, is a, this is still an 8-bit camera, so it's actually pointless going into D-Cine-like. What that does really is flatten your picture profile, so those of you who like the colour grade can have more accurate uh, precision on how you want your picture to look. That's fine, but not on 8-bit, because... The gradients are still too harsh. Um, DJI have announced that they're releasing a firmware update in October, which will convert the camera into 10-bit. So 8-bit has about 16 million colors, 10-bit has around a billion colors. And when you're looking at uh, gradients in the sky and, uh, well, pretty much everything, it's just a lot smooth, smoother. And when you're color grading, it, uh, it has much more of a, a popping effect. You can really fine tune the picture then on 10 bit. But like I say, I wouldn't bother with the way the camera is at the moment. But I'm excited to see how the normal color profile looks. Um, and without further ado, I shall probably stop talking now uh, and switch to my voiceover in the edit. I'll keep writing just so I can uh, analyze the picture. So I'm here in voiceover in the edit, so this is not the sound from the onboard mic. However, I'll come to the sound from that in a moment, but let's talk about the picture for a few minutes. The first observation I have is that it's a very true-to-life representation of the actual day which is in it. It's quite a flat day apart from the odd little sunny spots. Um, so it's not too saturated, the picture, and equally it's not too flat. My second observation is that it is handling the adjustment from the sort of darker areas into the light very well, very quickly but very smooth, unlike previous action cameras which have sort of whited out for a split second before it sort of catches up with the auto aperture. So all around very good visual here. Um, the reason I chose this bike again is because I'm leaning so far forward as you would do on any sports bike. 
And um, uh, so to get this sort of field of view, if you like, 155 degrees, um, it really uh, does bring, well, the cockpit to life. And it shows the viewer on my YouTube channel exactly what I'm seeing when I'm sitting behind the bars of this machine. Now back to the classroom, just for a second before I go into the sound a little bit more. Uh, the gain control, the audio gain control within the camera is only on a positive scale for some reason. So it goes up to something like plus 20, I think. But just set that once you've plugged your microphone in because otherwise it won't activate the gain control. Set that at zero. Because the beauty about the DJI wireless mic is that you can set all of the gain controls within the receiver. So what I'm going to do uh, for today's test is to set the gain within the receiver for transmitter one, which is what that is, down to minus 12. I'm also going to put in a little bit of bass cut, which again, you can do all within the beautiful, easy to use uh, touchscreen display on the receiver. So that bass cut will take out the road rumble and stop the heavy distorting of the sound. Well, hopefully, again, I'm about to try all this out. Uh, uh, as well as that, what the transmitter very cleverly does is it records the sound itself as well on a chip inside the transmitter. So if your link breaks between the transmitter and the receiver, fear not, you'll still have all of the audio on this unit. Just plug it into your computer like you would do a normal hard drive and access the file afterwards. If that's not clever enough, what this also does, well, both transmitters, don't forget you've got two, um, so if you didn't want to even hot swap, if you were riding along a motor vlog and, and you didn't even want to take this one back outside of the helmet, you can just use your second one because it comes with two and have the second one on you at all times. So that would be and make it even quicker for you to be a TV star. Um, so yeah, what this also does very cleverly is it records a safety track. I think it's about minus 6 dB lower than what it's recording the normal audio. So if like in certain cases where your sound might be distorted because you're riding along at high speeds on a motorbike, the safety track, if you have distorted any of your sound, the safety track should come to your rescue as well and allow you access again through the same means just by plugging it into a computer, it should all be there. Okay, so I've now set the field of view into wide. It's still uh, it's still a lot wider. I think the um, the super wide, the previous one I, ha I had there, it's about 155 degree angle, which is about 12 mil equivalent. Um, this is slightly narrower, but slightly more true to life, and I'm still impressed that you can see the the cockpit and both the uh, wing mirrors on the RS660, which I could never get in on the. Uh, DJ, oh, sorry, on the GoPro models or the Insta360, the One RS. Um, so I always struggle to get this type of view. So even though I'm still on wide, it's a lot wider uh, than the other action cams I've used. I should, I should also point out, since I uh, was just explaining about the sound there, um, that I have now set, I did notice that um, when I played back briefly, that it was slightly over modern, the audio. So I've now set the receiver gain in the DJI wireless receiver, on, that's the bit which is plugged into the side of the camera. I've set that to minus 12 now. It was on minus eight in that previous clip. So, uh, and I'm just looking at the the mic level, um, uh, uh, signal level on the back of the screen here. And it's not hit and red as much when I'm talking, uh, which, seems to suggest I'm recording the audio now at a much healthier level. I just love the whole, even when I stopped after my um, uh, uh, previous clip there in the ultra wide mode, I was able to stop really quick, just take the camera straight off the mount without having to do any bolts and sliding things out of frames or media mods or anything like that. So I just literally lifted it off within seconds and played back the clip just to check I was getting everything. And that's why I noticed it was slightly uh, distorted. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this and uh, I shall be quiet now uh, so I can analyze this picture and sound properly in the edit and uh, I'll cut to me in the edit now.
So a couple of observations here. Um, whilst the wide view still is wider, it really is more true to life, as I mentioned there. And the stabilisation is noticeable, obviously, because it's cropped in that little bit more. The stabilisation is rock solid. Uh, th that's possibly why they call it rock steady. Um, the other observation, and I forgot to tell you this, uh, when you press the one button on top of the camera to sort of bring it into life and to start recording, you're recording within one second. It's phenomenal. So if you're like me and you only turn the camera on when you want to talk about something or when you've seen something, uh, this really is the camera for that job. The Insta 361 RS is appalling at that. It took eight seconds and they still haven't fixed that with any firmware update. Um, so yeah, one second and uh, you're up and running recording and the picture quality yet again in the wide mode is, well, it's brilliant. Um, now, let's talk about the sound. Um, as you can see, I've reduced the levels in the receiver. I think the sound, my only gripe I have with the sound is it's possibly too clean. It's possibly too good. So, <laughs> Because uh, this is quite a noisy bike. Uh, the roar off this engine is something else, which I always pick up on uh, with other microphones. But uh, yeah, I'm knocked out with this. I really am. It's possibly the cleanest sound I've ever had from 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 any system so i'm gonna have to look at uh, introducing more road noise back into the mix whether i just uh, record some road noise um, uh, from an exterior mic uh, and mix it in when i'm editing but um or I'll, well i'll start by trying the easier way i'll start by mounting the microphone inside the helmet just a little bit further away from my mouth in the hope that i get some sort of realism because uh, you know uh, it almost sounds like voiceover it's so good So I've just selected the lens mode now into standard. I suspect this isn't really going to be wide enough um, for being on board a motorbike, but you never know if you're on a, um, a cruiser and you're sitting far back, then the standard might be okay. Um, yeah, it's a bit, I'm just looking at the back of the screen here. It's a little bit too, um, especially if I lift my head up to see more of the horizon. It's a little bit too tight for being on a motorbike. I knew it would be. Um, I suspect uh, wide is going to be my go-to setting, but again, I can analyse that back in the edit. Uh, incidentally, this camera here is the new Insta360 X3. It is incredible. I've done a full review on that. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited, folks, because what I'm thinking now is that have I just found the ultimate setup? <laughs> Um, uh, for motor vlogging, I mean, two cameras, that could be it, as well as my phone now for stills. Uh, so, yeah, I just love the picture um, quality, the picture profile, rather, out of the X3. Um, really excited to get back into the edit and see exactly what the colours are doing on the, uh, on the new Osmo Action 3. Uh, he's got four-wheel motorbike, of course. Um, so what I should tell you also about the, um, the manual settings within the Action 3, um, you have full manual control over everything, but when you're on a motorbike, you don't want to be stopping just to adjust your shutter speed or your aperture um, because the sun has come out or gone in. So I have put everything on auto, but what is a lovely little feature is that you can select your ISO range. Uh, what I mean by that, um, is that, um, well, I, I currently have the camera set into 100 to 800 ISO. You can go from 100 up to something like 12,000, but anything above 800 ISO on an action camera, because of the size of the sensor, um, it's just going to turn really grainy uh, in low light. So, um, really excited about this camera, and uh, one ND fill does start getting released, of course, then we're going to have even more flexibility. Um, so, all in all, that's pretty much all of the testing I want to do today on board of a motorbike. And obviously, there's a, a load of other features that the camera can do in terms of slow mo, whatever else. But this is my initial testing. And like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a beautiful buzz that's just flown right across me. Um, yeah, uh, this is more about the workflow rather than a camera test. So, do you know what? Just as I ride home, I'm going to stop and select the camera into wide mode again, which was my favourite. And why don't I just show you how quick all of this can happen, actually. Um, and the other thing was, uh, 
what I was going to say to you is that I'm going to unplug the wireless go and put just use the uh, inbuilt microphones uh, within the camera um, with wind reduction on because there is there is a hidden microphone uh, underneath the base of the camera which is uh, supposed to be really good for when you're uh, in a lot of wind or a noisy environment so I'm just going to try that now so forgive me uh, I will be signing off here by the way um, while out on the road I'll say my goodbyes to you in voiceover but I'm just going to unplug So I'm using the onboard microphones now. I don't know if you can hear me. Probably not. Well, you definitely won't be able to hear me when I get going. I'm just curious to see if I can actually pick up the engine noise of the motorbike. Okay, so uh, I'm back in wide mode now. I'm just going to tilt the camera up a little bit. So as you can hear there, there is quite a bit of wind noise being introduced into the audio above a certain speed. It's not bad, but if I was just wanting to record the engine sound, it's not good either. However, like everything I've experimented with in this video, the uh, DJI wireless mic system and the Osmo Action 3, uh, this really is its first outing for me. So I will be uh, trying and testing every little device and uh, I'll be looking for the best possible scenario for audio as well as uh, picture. Overall though I'm super impressed the picture quality is really spot on the image stabilization is amazing the field of view is just it was made for motorbikes if you're asking me that and then there's the audio I mean what an incredible system to be able to transmit wirelessly now from inside your helmet to the outside and then hot swap everything just within a second or two so you can be walking down the street then doing a piece to camera um, wearing the same microphone it's just a, a brilliant setup I can't wait to take it on a, a proper field trip as it were but uh, my first thoughts absolutely knockout um, if you're thinking about buying this system don't even hesitate once again, folks, I hope you uh, enjoyed that, and I hope I was able to shed some light on some of your questions. On that note, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Really appreciate you coming along for the ride. Thanks a million for tuning in. I'm Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV.